All right, so now that we've gone through animating each one of those examples and using the graph editor, this is what we're really after, which is the four different types of motion that we can use in animation. Okay, we've got linear motion up at the top, which is just moving smoothly across the screen at an even pace. Ease in, which is what we were using in our example, so it starts fast and moves to slower all the way until it comes to a stop in this example. Uh, ease out, where it's easing out of this position, it's going faster and faster and faster until it's going at a breakneck speed over on this side. And then finally, ease in, ease out, which is a combination of both, where this side is going slowly, the middle is going quickly, and this side is going slowly as well, which is more like naturalistic motion um, being driven by muscles in a creature or in a human being. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through and create each one of these examples step by step so that we're absolutely grounded in the graph editor and we know how to control the program. Really in animation, these are the four different types of motion you're going to use. There's not a whole lot else, and if you're thinking of doing something uh, sharp like a fast in or fast out, it's really just ease in or ease out, but on the opposite side. So this is fast in, and this is fast out here. Okay, So all motions are really just a combination of these things, or a bit of one of these, and then combination with another thing. Okay, so let's go ahead and start making these. Uh, first thing, I'm going to uh, select this one, show you what this looks like. So I'm going to open up the animation graph editor. Okay, here's the graph editor for linear motion. So as you can see, linear motion is really just two keyframes. Here's the beginning keyframe, here's the ending keyframe, and it just travels straight from point to point. So we're already really familiar with this. So there's no real need to go through this one again. It's just setting two keyframes in time. Okay. The second example, the one that we already worked through, um, the ease in, is the same thing, two keyframes in the exact same places, only now the graph is curved. And curving that graph was by uh, freeing the tangent weights. In this case, it looks like this one's not free. Uh, I'll go ahead and free it up just so that I can play with it. Okay, there they are freed up. It was taking these tangent handles and flattening this ending position so that it would be moving more slowly and sharpening this position or making it more steep so that it would be more quickly traveling at the beginning of the motion. So we've got this nice ease in. Okay, now the next one that we're going to look at, oops, there we go, let me get rid of that. The next one we're going to look at is the ease out example where it's slow in the beginning and fast at the end. So try to predict what that graph is going to look like. So it's going slowly at the beginning and fast at the end. Okay, so here's what the graph actually looks like for that. I'm going to have to select that object. There we go. Here's what that graph actually looks like. Shrink that down. Okay, slow at the beginning, fast at the end. Looks like we've got visibility keyed as well, so I'll just select Translate X. So this is slow motion because we have little change over time and fast motion because we have a lot of change over a very short amount of time. So steep line is fast, shallow line is slow. And it was using the exact same methods that we would use for that ease in example. Instead of moving this this way, we just moved it this way towards its flat. Okay. Um, by the way, we can use some of the presets in the program to help us make these decisions. Um, up here at the top there's a set of buttons which give us some default tangents. Um, you can see spline tangents, clamped, linear, flat, stepped, and plateau. I won't tell you what all of them do right now, but play around them with, with them and you can get the idea. Um, by default, we set our tangents to linear. So, whoops, I'm sorry, that's not linear. This is linear. Okay, so linear meaning that it would travel straight from point to point. We can use these buttons to help us set um, some of these default movements. So since we're doing ease out, um, I want this one to be flat. So we have this flat button here. See, it makes it a nice flat point. Now, there is no steep button, I suppose, linear, you know, it doesn't really do that. It just sort of tries to point it directly at the previous line. Uh, but we can just swing this downward, and now we've got that same motion back uh, put in again. So flat uh, tangents are important enough uh, in animation because that causes a gradual change that they just get giving you a preset for it right here. Uh, these other buttons are all sort of... Uh, uh, different ways of giving you either a flat or a smooth tangent uh, angle. Um, and it's nothing that you couldn't do yourself except for uh, step tangents, which is sort of a specialty thing. Okay? So that is the ease out animation. Let me just show you that one more time. Ease out. Okay? 
Now try to predict what ease in, ease out looks like. As we can see this plays, at the beginning it's slow, in the middle it's fast, and at the end it's slow again. Which means that we have to have very little change here, very little change here, and we have to have a lot of change in the middle. Okay? So here's what that looks like. Okay, it's an S curve. Again, let me select the Translate X channel. So an S curve causes an ease out here, some fast motion, and then an ease in at the end. Okay? That gives us a cushion or a gradual change and a gradual stopping at the end here. Okay? So very quickly, let's work through building each one of those just one more time so that it's very, very easy to remember what it is that we're doing. I'm just going to select all four of these. And down here on the timeline, I'm going to delete their animation information. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold Shift and left click and drag from my last keyframe to my first. And with this red selection, anywhere in this red selection, I'm going to right click and hold and just hit delete. Okay, and there they go. They all pop back to their zeroed position in X Translate. You can see down here, this is now an X Translate because I'm looking through the front viewport. Okay, so with all four of them selected, I'm just going to translate them over to what I think should be their starting position. Looks like negative 12. Let's go ahead and enter in negative 12 so it's nice and even. Okay, negative 12 for all of them. And I'm going to key select it. I still have all of them selected, by the way, so I'm going to key select it negative 12 on every single one of them. Since all of these uh, these animations are going to take the exact same keyframes, I can just key them all at the same time. Very, very easy. So I'm going to go to frame 24, which is the end of our animation. Okay, I'm going to drag them all over to where I think they should end. Say right there. Okay, it looks like it's positive 13, so let's put in 13. And key selected. And so all of them now should just move smoothly across the screen. So that's our starting position. Great. I'm going to deselect, go back to frame one, select linear. Now linear is already complete. Okay, it moves linearly. If we want to check, we can bring up the graph editor and take a look. And yep, it moves linearly. Um, so job well done there. Very easy. All right. Number two, we want it to ease in. So we want it to gradually come to a halt at the end of the movement. So here in the graph, we've got our linear graph, so we want this one to gradually come to a halt. So I'm going to select both sides, free the tangent handles, uh, because they're already weighted in my defaults. For this one, I'll go ahead and select the flat tangent option. And for this one, I'll go ahead and make it steeper. So there we go. And I can exaggerate this, of course, by dragging this outward. Um, to lock your, your movement to a particular dimension, by the way, you can hold down shift before you middle mouse click and drag it'll give you this question mark if I drag sideways now I'm incapable of dragging it downward it will lock it in this dimension or if I dragged upwards I'd be incapable of dragging it left and right well actually that doesn't seem to work for a tangent handle but it would work for vertices uh, so I'm going to exaggerate this just a little bit move this out right there looks good let's test it and that's a nice ease in Okay, let's go ahead and do ease out, the opposite sort of movement for this. So we want it to be gradually moving in the beginning and fast moving at the end. I'll select both sides, free their tangent handle weights. Uh, I'll make this one a flat tangent, this one a steep angle. There we go. I'll go ahead and exaggerate this one a little bit. Okay, so we've got gradual movement and sudden movement. Go ahead and test that. And there we go, exactly what we predicted. And then finally, our ease in, ease out example, which should have elements of both. So we want the beginning of our line to be gradual, and we want the end of our line to be gradual as well. So I'm going to hit flat tangents for both of these, which gives me my beginning S curve, which is you know a little bit under exaggerated, but it's working. Then I'm going to extend this one out and I'm going to extend this one out as well until I get a much more curvy line. In fact, I'm going to keep going with that because that's not enough. Looking nicer. Yeah, I think that's pretty nice. It's still a little bit understated, but that's going to make a nice motion. So should we, get, we should get smooth motion um, coming out of the stop, fast motion, and then smooth slow down here at the end. So let's taste that out. And there we go.
So that's each one of these four different types of motion that you would use in animation. There are eccentric motions, there are motions that use a combination of two of these or they rapidly switch back and forth between slowing down, speeding up, coming to a sudden halt. Um, and we'll explore that in the next video when we do a diagrammed bouncing ball, not based off of video reference yet, but just a diagram of motion to understand how motion works.